The NATO-led international group is meeting in Qatar to decide how to proceed with its military intervention in Libya. France and the UK want to step up the assault on Colonel Gaddafi and are considering arming the rebels. But for more, I'm now joined from Geneva by Johan Galtung, rector of the Transcend Peace University. Many thanks for being with us here on RT. Now, the NATO-led coalition has performed over 2,000 airstrikes in Libya so far, but the civil war there really does seem to remain in deadlock. So what do you think the coalition might plan to do next? Is there a chance of a ground invasion? There's a very heavy chance on a ground invasion, and I think we have to see it in a sort of grand perspective. This is uh, not only the US empire, but Western imperialism, colonialism, in a last stage, making desperate efforts to regain something of what they lost. And France was the biggest colonial country, and of course England, of the same size, these two together dominated Africa. They think they have found an opening in Libya that they can use at the same time as the US is practically speaking bankrupt. 41% of every dollar they spend federally goes to servicing the debt. At the same time, I think that when France entered NATO, re-entered some years ago, they put some very strong conditions for the entry. And I belong to those who at the time thought, aha, this is Sarkozy's plan. He wants to dominate NATO. And maybe Obama, in a sense, is willing to give some of that to him in order to get out, because Obama is now fighting six Muslim countries at the same time. Now, of course, they want now a ground war, because they know perfectly well that they are not trapped by their own propaganda. This is not a humanitarian action. This is regime change. And uh, they are linked to the people in Benghazi, the Husseini clan, which was also the kings, the old King Idris's clan. So we have clan warfare going on at the same time. There is the flag that they used. Of course, very strong and opinions all of this, there. And, and, uh, I think very important. Oh, I was, uh, have very strong opinions there. And of course, the coalition itself does stress the humanitarian reasons for which they're going in. Uh, but the coalition also, it does seem uh, focused now, doesn't it, on forcing Gaddafi out. So uh, why don't they just go in and capture him, do you think? Well, they, of course, would like him to leave voluntarily. And I think they're afraid of making Gaddafi a martyr. We have almost to go back to the first years where Gaddafi was a hero who kicked out the American, the enormous American air base, who blew life into the Arab League. That was thwarted later on, and he has lately been working for African Union. Now, all of this is not to the liking of the Western powers. So they want to get in, they want to strengthen, and let the people in Benghazi do the job for them go further east, 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 and ultimately kill or make an end, or hopefully get him out of the country and asylum. But he's a military man, and he is, to my mind, very filled with Bedouin logic and Bedouin ethics, which means not to resign, not to capitulate. It means to die as a martyr, much preferable, much, much, much better. And that would not be a solution for the West at all. OK, again, a, a very strong uh, emotive uh, 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 analysis of the situation there. But let's talk about the opposition and all this. Who's to guarantee that they won't uh, pull the country apart if Gaddafi leaves? If Gaddafi leaves, my reading of it is that he has very strong support. And one should not only look at the road that goes along the Mediterranean. Look at the map. You will see deep, deep, deep into Africa. The people get blacker and blacker, and they're very loyal to Gaddafi. Gaddafi gave them some kind of dignity they didn't have before. You have to compare the Libya that he brought into being with the Libya before 69. So that war can go on for a very, very long time, even without Gaddafi. And, and here uh, the West, and particularly the US, becomes a victim of blowing up the importance of the leader, forgetting that there is a people behind. OK, again, uh, very major analysis of the situation. Now, NATO has been divided over the intervention there in Libya, hasn't it? Germany uh, refuses to play a role, while France actually led initial calls for military action. So how deep a split do you think we're seeing in the alliance? And what do you think uh, the implications of that could be? 
It was quite clear that uh, when this was for the Security Council, the argument for not voting in favor of the resolution was that it wasn't even. It did not do to Bahrain and Yemen what they wanted to do to Libya. That was the argument by the BRIC countries, and not to forget Germany. Very, very important. Now, NATO is supposed to operate by consensus. This is also against NATO's rules, what they're doing. Uh, that the U.S. president is supposed to consult, the con to, to consult according to the Constitution, even at the very beginning of the Constitution with the Congress, has also been neglected. Evidently, they know that they are in a very weak position, and they were hoping that by quick action they could obtain what they wanted. Okay, they strong didn't. opinions there, live from uh, the Swiss capital. Thank you, Johan Gelting, for uh, your views on the situation in Libya. Many thanks.